Rising food prices from vegetables to roti canai have made headlines recently, prompting the government to institute measures such as export bans and prolonging the imposition of ceiling prices. In recent weeks, the price of vegetables and fish have increased by 4.5% and 3.8% respectively, while restaurant owners have warned that roti canai prices could rise to 2 ringgit 20 sen owing to higher prices of wheat, dal and cooking oil. The retail price of chicken has been capped at 8 ringgit 90 sen per kilogram, which farmers say is too low. The government has announced a new ceiling price of 9 ringgit 40 sen per kilogram, effective July 1st. But why are prices rising and will government measures actually work? FMT takes a closer look at this issue and the way forward. Carmelo Ferlito from the Centre for Market Education attributed the rising prices to both domestic and international supply chain issues, resulting from such factors as the Russia-Ukraine conflict and a spike in raw material costs. Um, one of the biggest ways we're all feeling the pinch is, of course, at the pump. Gas prices re reaching a record high. Ukraine on global food prices. Russia is the world's largest exporter of wheat. Domestically, he said, COVID-19 lockdowns, labor shortages and the hike in the minimum wage to 1,500 ringgit were contributing factors. Ferlito said the lockdowns led to a reduction in both supply and demand, and while demand recovered quickly after international borders were reopened and restrictions lifted, this was not the case with supply. But on the supply side, this means shutting down plants, uh, firing workers, uh, uh, stopping to stockpile raw materials. As for chicken prices, he said the cost of chicken feed components such as corn had also risen, drastically pushing up running costs for poultry farmers. In April, the prices of chicken feed components such as grain corn and soybean meals increased by 13% and 11% respectively. Furlito said for chicken prices to come down, the ceiling price must be removed so that it could be determined by the market. Prices for this commodity, chicken specifically, in order to give the signal to the producers that profit opportunities are there to be exploited and therefore to bring back the quantity supplied in equilibrium with the quantity demanded, which is necessary for the supply to step up and to meet the increased demand, and so naturally the prices can cool off again. As for other food items, Ferlito said it was an issue of supply meeting demand, and once this happened, prices would start to normalize. So if price controls are not effective, what else can the government do? Aside from letting market forces determine prices, Ferlito said the government could provide food vouchers to the hardcore poor. But he said the subsidy should not last more than three months, by which time the market would have corrected any price volatility. This, I think, can work better than direct cash, cash aids because um, a market can emerge for these uh, uh, vouchers so that people that are less in the need of them can trade with people that are more in the need. So uh, people can adjust each other to the uh, mutual needs. 